Well, I think I am now streaming live for everybody out there who might be watching on the Whedon Unleashed Facebook page. Welcome. This is episode number six of Unleashed, the podcast. Uh, we're going live stream here on Facebook because I have an interesting, fascinating guest that I'm going to introduce to you in just a second. But from the podcast standpoint, I want everybody to know that Unleashed the Podcast is now really official because you can subscribe somewhere and watch. You can go to Google Podcasts, you can go to Spotify, you can go to Stitcher, you can go to Apple Podcasts. Uh, there's more coming, but for right now, those four, you can go and subscribe so you never miss an episode. That's Unleashed the Podcast. Uh, this is episode six. My guest is Brianna Ryan, and I'm going to introduce her uh, in just a second, but I'm going to thank her first for being here. I'm going to double check, and yes, indeed, Brianna, our fingers crossed work. We are actually <laughs> live streaming on Facebook for all of your family and friends to see. How's that sound? Exciting. I'm happy to be here. So listen, I've known Brianna for an awful long time, and I've, I've watched her grow up. Uh, she did break my heart a little bit by going to Washington State University instead of the University of Washington, but I forgive her for that. Uh, but she has been, uh, dating back to uh, her younger years in school, an excellent writer, an excellent writer. And now she works as a freelance writer for Fearless in Training. And Brianna just wrote an article that caught my attention. And it caught my attention because it, it's on a topic that's really topical in business. And it's on gender language and, and how people are referred to as gender in the business world. And, you know, we have a whole lot of discussions right now in our world around diversity and inclusion. And I found this to be a really fascinating topic. And so, Brianna, uh, welcome. I'm, I'm going to put my glasses on for those who are watching on the live stream. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to reference uh, <laughs> to reference the article that I have right up here, and it's called "Why Gender Neutral Language Matters." It's on the Fearless in Training blog. Uh, Brianna Ryan, "Why Gender Neutral Language Matters," and so Brianna, I'm actually going to kind of kick off with this. This obviously mattered to you in a way that compelled you to write this article. Talk a little bit about why you felt so strongly to write about this. Yeah, so it started out um, that image that is in the middle of the blog post that has kind of a grid of like gendered terms for job roles and relationship roles and then kind of more gender neutral terms, alternatives to them, um, was posted by a nonprofit called The Female Lead. Um, for those of you that are familiar with it, it's a pretty um, feminist and female empowerment oriented organization. Um, and it, they post a lot of content on social media and I'd seen them post that image and I was scrolling through the comments and the first 50 comments that came out after that post were all overwhelmingly negative. Mm. There was not a single positive comment on the post. Everyone was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen why would you even post this? Um, and it really, it kind of was surprising for me. It shouldn't have been, but it was a little bit that it wasn't more of a mix, especially given what the organization is. Gender language has been a big part of feminism for a long time. Um, and so I was really surprised by the response. I was talking to Madeline at Fearless and training about it. And I was like, I cannot believe that more people didn't stand up for this or respond more positively to this, I really want to write a post on why it matters. Because her other brand, um, Women Talk Money, is women with an X in it to be more inclusive and gender neutral. Um, and so it really fit with the brand and everything. And so I was excited to dig in a little bit more. And we're going to dig in. I'm, I'm actually going to give the website. Uh, I, I have it posted on the Facebook page, but I want to let mm -hmm. people know fearlessintraining.com slash blog. And I think just so I don't give the whole thing, they'll be able to find that. So the article, if you want to pull it up, is fearlessintraining.com forward slash blog. You just talked about uh, the feminism part and it, it, it that really is part of diversity and inclusion, correct? Yeah, yeah, and, definitely. And so, so I know that as, as I, as I, 
study what's going on in business that many large corporations, the Fortune 500, let's say, of the world, and, and many of the large corporate entities, they, they're having their own diversity and inclusion groups and working groups and, and committees and all of that. Yet small and medium-sized businesses aren't there yet. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But your, your article really touches on why it's important for businesses and business owners and CEOs of small and medium-sized businesses to care about this. Would you, would you respond to that? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have this kind of uh, perception that gender neutral language only matters in the sense that someone who is non-binary or trans would be offended or personally hurt if you didn't use the right pronouns. And that's the only reason it matters. And so if you aren't one of those people, it doesn't really matter to you. It doesn't really affect your life. But the reality is that, especially in business, it has an impact on like your customers, your consumers, who you're drawing in, and also how your employees, how their relationship is with you, and also how the rest of the world sees your company on an identity level. It's one thing to talk about inclusivity in your mission statement or your values, but if you aren't making efforts like this, which are super simple changes to change your language, it's you, that inclusivity part of your um, mission and values doesn't come across to other people. And if the consumer doesn't feel like you are who you say you are as a brand, they're a lot less likely to want to interact with you and continue purchasing from you and promote you. Well, you know, it's funny that because I, I, I'm, I'm about to, to reference your article and you really just, <laughs> excuse me, took exactly what I was going to say because you wrote, <clears throat> excuse me, using more inclusive or gender neutral language can broaden your customer or client base, help attract more people and help your brand make a better first impression. Uh, I thought that that was really a strong language and, and you just noted that. You also wrote that the words we use aren't just words. They have power and research has shown that language actually shapes the way we think and, and you italicized think. And, and because obviously that meant more important. This is not just about checking off a box and saying, okay, this is the way the world's going. So we're going to have to try to do this. You're really talking about, we have to kind of shape and influence what we're thinking about because that's going to make long-term change. Am I reading that correctly? Definitely. Definitely. A lot of research has shown that um, when you think, if you look at like a job role that is inherently gendered one way or another, like um, policeman, if you hear that, you automatically will only envision men, regardless of if that's a term used for all genders, just inherently that's who you picture. And so it's hard to break out of that, even with all the best intentions in the world, things pop into our heads. So this just popped into my head. This is what happens. It just popped into my head. So as since, since a kid, guys meant everybody. You guys. Hey, guys. And, and for whatever reason recently, I've kind of tried to note more and try to use it less if I have women around because I, I, I'm starting to think, maybe I'm, maybe I'm developing and growing myself. Maybe, maybe I, 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 it's not too late for me. I'm trying to think <laughs> and say, I'm not talking to a bunch of, I'm talking to men and women. That's one of those things. Is, is, is guys no good anymore? Is that something that we should try to, not because, for any other reason, but we want to be more inclusive. Is that something that is changing? Yeah, definitely. That is one of the like colloquialisms that people tend to hang on very tightly to. So people aren't usually like really frustrated with you if you slip up and say guys, because it is such an ingrained part of like our language, but it is something people are trying to move away from for that same reason. It, it kind of excludes others, even though you mean it to include everyone. If you think about literally what you're saying, your words aren't including everyone. So let me ask you this, because you mentioned the, the article or the post that you'd read that the first 50 were, were really negative. I've got to believe that there is a segment of people, and I'm just going to say, especially middle age, my age and older, uh, that 
would be listening to this or reading something about it and saying, okay, this is another case of political correctness. Uh, you know, why can't men be men, women be women, that, that all thing. And there are, there's going to be pushback and that's normal. But I'm going to put you on the spot, Brianna. If somebody said that to you, oh, you know, this is just some more of that PC stuff. How would you respond? I'm so that's part of why I wrote the article the way that I did. I knew that would generally be the response. And I knew that it would be a lot of the just the idea of there being two genders or that like this doesn't affect me and the people I know because we are binary and so it doesn't matter. Um, and so I tried to orient the article to show how whether or not you care on a personal level, it impacts your life through your business. And also another big part of that article that I wrote was that it actually makes a really big difference for gender equity, just looking at the binary genders even. Um, there's a lot of evidence that like, by using more gender neutral job descriptions, our children are more likely to go for jobs that are stereotypically male or female oriented because suddenly that mental image isn't there right. to them that right. this is only for men or this is only for women. Right. Um, and so it can, it can push some of the, some of the gender equity stuff that we've been struggling with for so long that impacts all of us and it impacts the younger generations. Um, but also it's, it's more about just being respectful to other people. It, it's actually changing the culture that we live in and it's going, the culture we live in is changing regardless of whether you become part of that change or push against it. So, so you really hit on it though. You hit, you use the word respectful. So ultimately when we can, we can logically say a whole lot of things about, hey, this is good for your business because this is good for your, your clients and your, your... ultimately, this, this really comes down to respect and empathy, doesn't it? Yeah. And I think another thing a lot of people that push back don't even realize is so many of these instances or so many of these words you use anyways. A lot of times you speak gender neutrally without even thinking about it. I know my mom, whenever she puts out something to my siblings and I, since we are not all women or all men, when she puts out something to tell us to invite our partners, she says significant others, which could apply to men or women because we have mixed genders of partners. Right. And some of us are married, some of us are not. And so there's little things like that that you do all the time without making a conscious effort to be like, oh, I'm going to say this gender neutrally. Um, and there are also so many instances where you just don't even need to say gendered language there. Like um, a lot of times people use the phrase like brothers and sisters when something bad happens. They talk about like our brothers and sisters in this country are hurting. Yeah. That's just a weird phrase that you don't even need. You can just say the people in this country are hurting. People, and like, yeah, okay, right, right, right. It's really so, easy. So I want to ask you, Def, I was going to ask you this before and then I got sidetracked and asked you even a better question, but I, I, you've used the word a lot and you use it in your article. I did a little research, but for those of the people who are listening saying, what is binary? She keeps using the word binary and non-binary. What does that mean? So binary um, means two. So it's the idea that there are two genders, male and female, and that's it. Versus non-binary is the idea that gender is a spectrum and there are some people who do not identify as either strictly male or female um, or somewhere in between or prefer not to have a gender associated with them that prefer more gender neutral pronouns and other words. Okay, and the reason I want to bring that up is I, I, we're gonna start kind of winding down, but I wanted, I, I thought that your, se your second to last paragraph was really strong and I'm gonna read it here and, and have you just chat a little bit about it and and, the emphasis on it. You write, by using gendered language, we are allowing the continued subordination and exclusion of women and many non-binary and LGBTQ plus folk. When we insist on using language that is gender binary, we exclude anyone who does not identify with traditional binary definitions of genders and phrases like mankind, man hour, and manpower emphasize male contributions to labor and society and minimize the contributions of women and other individuals. Uh, I thought that was a very powerful statement. Would you expand on that just a little bit? Yeah, so it's kind of what I was saying earlier with guys. 
even if we all know that you mean mankind to be everyone, that's not literally what you're saying. And so it's back to that whole mental image thing. Every time you use that kind of language, we're not, we're not thinking about women and other genders' contributions to society. We're thinking about men. Um, and it, it's small, but a lot of that is subconscious triggers in our head, right? So even if that's not your intention, that doesn't necessarily mean that how it is perceived is perceived gender neutrally. So why not just not use that phrase and try using something else instead? And ultimately, again, we kind of, we, this always seems to kind of roll back. We're talking about ways to be more respectful, more empathetic of the humans uh, that we are sharing this earth with and sharing business with and, and thinking about that really in the end, uh, while there are many other great reasons, that, that's kind of the foundation, isn't it? Definitely. Okay. Absolutely. So listen, people are going to say, oh, I got to read more about this Brianna Ryan. I got to read more things that she's writing. And I'm guessing that you're not done writing about this topic and many other topics. If people want to read more about your work or contact you, yeah, how do they do that? Um, the best place to find me is on LinkedIn, or you can reach out to the team at Fearless and Training. Um, I'm working on putting together a site that'll have all of my information and all my articles. Since I freelance, I write a lot of different places, but it's not quite together yet. So LinkedIn's the best place to find me, or like I said, through Fearless and Training. Great. Okay. That sounds fantastic. Uh, everybody, this has been Unleashed, the podcast episode six. My guest has been Brianna Ryan. We've been talking about gender neutral language in business. Uh, this has been live streamed on Facebook and uh, you're gonna also get a chance to hear it on Unleashed the Podcast and on my website at www.danweeden.com. Uh, Brianna, thank you very much for having been part of this. Uh, I'm probably going to be asking you to come back on again soon and talk more about future articles. Sound good? Yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, to everybody else out there, be well, stay safe, and above all, be unleashed. <laughs>